Okay, good everybody. This is Dr. Ali Mugabel. Today's lecture is about uh, capacity of a Gaussian channel and we'll also introduce the information capacity theorem. So we'll have capacity of Gaussian channel and we'll introduce the information capacity theorem. Uh, let's start by our model. We consider a band limited, power limited, discrete memoryless channel. I hope by now every one of these words has a clear meaning. Band limited, the channel has a limited bandwidth B, and the power is limited, which means that we will make sure that the expected value of the input is limited by P, less than or equal to even value, and we are dealing with a memoryless channel. The simple model is shown here in the diagram where we have uh, X shown in green, which is nothing but uh, uh, the transmitted power or transmitted samples of a random process. And the bandwidth is limited to B. We have the noise has a zero mean Gaussian noise and the variance is given by N0 times B, watts per hertz th times the bandwidth. So the variance of the noise is N0 times B. And the output is the received samples, which are statistically independent. And as I mentioned, the power is limited. We can also relate that at based on Nyquist rate, where we sample twice the highest frequency, two B samples per transmitting per transmission. So we have two B, two B samples are transmitted in T seconds. So we can have the following relation. K, we have K equals to 2 times B, this is the sampling rate, times the time. That will give you the number of uh, samples or channel uses in T seconds. Okay, so we'll summarize this in the following table. We have the, f I just picked the equations here, to summarize them. This is a power limitation, noise representation, and number of samples related to the bandwidth and the, the, the sampling uh, duration. I'll take this into our next slide. So remember that the information capacity of uh, a channel is given by maximizing the BDF, finding the probabilities of I, X, Y, the joint, the mutual information. And we have constraint optimization that the power is limited. Without going into the proof, we can show uh, that the capacity is given by the following relation per, per channel use. So this is just take it as is. It's related to the transmitted power and, and the variance of the noise. Using these equations, I can replace the noise variance with n naught times b. And also, instead of representing the capacity per channel use, I can scale it by k over t to give you, to just to make a, a unit transformation from per channel use to per second. So we have k over t uh, as a multiplier. This is just a unit conversion. Now, I can also replace k with its equivalent 2b times t, so the t cancels out, and I'll get the 2 cancels with the 2, so we are left with b log base 2 of 1 plus 1 plus times the power, 1 plus p divided by n naught b. Okay, this is the capacity of a channel of a white, of a Gaussian channel in terms of b, in terms of bandwidth shown in green, in terms of channel bandwidth shown in green, in terms of average transmitted power, and in terms of noise PSD, power spectral density. It's a very important equation. I'd like you to know, to remember it, please, and know the assumptions used, and it's just for Gaussian. Now we can state the information capacity theorem, which is also known as the Shannon's third theorem. The information capacity of a continuous channel of bandwidth B hertz affected by additive white Gaussian noise channel with power spectral density in over 2 and limited in, in bandwidth to B is given by the following. The capacity is given by the following. I'd like you to take a moment to pause the video and write the three different Shannon theorems. First theorem, second theorem, and third theorem. Source coding, channel coding, and channel capacity theorem. Okay, now, instead of representing the capacity, we can look at the bandwidth efficiency. The bandwidth efficiency is, we will have to divide by the bandwidth. So let's consider the ideal case, where the rate, the bit rate, equal to the, to the capacity. 
this is ideal because we can the capacity is the maximum transmission rate so if we transmit at rb equal to capacity it means we are having the ideal system and recall that in that case the power equal to the energy divided by time or the energy multiplied by the rate and since the rate equal to the capacity i can say the power equal to the energy multiplied by c all right now i can go back to the equations and divide both sides by b i get c over b which is now given in terms of bandwidth efficiency the same equation i can also replace p with ec eb times c under the ideal condition so that will give you the relation between the bandwidth efficiency energy ab over n naught and uh, we have also the the bandwidth efficiency here remember we usually say eta uh, the efficiency the bandwidth efficiency equal to rb over b but since in our case that rb is nothing but uh, the capacity I can say that this is efficiency and this is efficiency the bandwidth efficiency now if you are interested in representing EB over N0 you need to take uh, 2 the power of 2 of both sides so we'll get 2 raised to power C over B and then we have minus 1 divided by CB so to get this equation which is explicit in terms of EB over N0 or, or in one side we're just taking the power of 2 of both sides and then do a little bit of math uh, manipulation All right, now let's take this equation and the bandwidth efficiency and draw some conclusions, very important conclusions. The diagram shown in the left is on the y-axis, we have the bandwidth efficiency, Rb over B. On the x-axis, we have the Eb over naught and dB scale. So starting with this equation, the bandwidth efficiency for ideal systems in Gaussian channel. Some observations. For infinite bandwidth, if we take the B equal to infinity, we will find out that uh, we'll get the EB over no, the signal to noise ratio, if as you take the limit, will approach len 2. And that is equal to 0 0.693, which is equivalent in dB scale to minus 1.5, which is equivalent in dB scale to minus 1.59. So if you assume we have infinite bandwidth, then the minimum required energy or if even not would be one minus 1.6 which is shown here so this is the limit there is no good communication system that communicate with EB over not below this this is called the limit the channel limit and we take it by taking the limit assuming there is a trade-off between bandwidth and EB over not if we take the bandwidth to be infinity which means we'll get the minimum possible energy over a not so this is called the channel limit now for infinite bandwidth the capacity if we take just the capacity this is the equation that we have here if we go back to the original equation and we take the limit as b goes to infinity we'll get the following diagram so as the bandwidth goes to infinity the capacity will approach the following equation so this is the capacity limit now if you look at the channel the capacity bound where rc equal to rb this is the bound it means that this is the bound we have two regions this line which is the capacity bound rb equal to c rc equal to the capacity okay so to send less it's possible this region is possible because you require more power but to have less power to be in this side it's not possible the region for which rb greater than capacity you cannot transmit here with low probability of error so we can say that the capacity bound curve for r equal to c which is shown here okay it is given two regions the one shown in gray scale which is this one it's impossible to have error free transmission and rb is greater than rc more the capacity or transmitting more than the capacity we can transmit less with error free possibilities so the importance of Shannon theorem, it tells you what are the theoretical limit. So if somebody claims that he has in the lab system with relatively low probability of error and he is using transmission below the limit or in this region, we tell him there is something wrong. Okay, with this we conclude the part about information theory here and uh, we'll see you in coming videos.